In this video, I'm gonna share five real roofing insights from the roofing industry. Five things manufacturers will not tell you about asphalt shingles. Over 80% of roofs in the United States are asphalt shingles. So we're only talking about them today. There are about nine manufacturers and it's pretty much over 80% of roofs that you see around driving in your town. Let's go. I have never seen a recall in my life. I have asked these questions hundreds of roofers, if not thousands, and we pretty much don't see them. We do see the problems, let me make it clear. We do see problems with the shingles on the job sites. But the fact is, once manufacturers produce the shingles, put it in the truck, ship it to, supplier and supplier will deliver it on the job site it ends right there so manufacturers uh, because of logistic issues because how heavy the shingles are and everything supply and distribution issues they pretty much never recall it as a matter of fact i have seen problems we all have if you're in the roofing industry you will see you know, issues like massive granule loss uh blistering um bad badges happens on a regular basis i'm not saying we say seeing them daily but we do see them but maybe it's one or two percent the problem is when you have that bad badge would you think that the whole badge should be returned i have visited many plants when you go to the plant you usually see good quality shingles goes this way bad quality shingles make it pretty much all the way to the dumpster and then goes to landfill yeah. what happens when they are making bad shingles that day and they do make to the field as a matter of fact in 2015 my company stopped using one of the brands my crews pretty much were coming to me saying Dimitri, we refuse to install it look at the discrepancy look at the uh, mailing zone look, look how bad the shingle is like they literally was falling apart we have a first claim with that brand uh, shingles did not seal for like two years manufacturer invited me to their plant and i pretty much have seen everything still producing three months later on that plant they will not tell you there's no recalls and we used to recall so if you go to walmart you see a list of products you know baby products automotive products toys uh, usually health related products like in automotive industry if ford makes a vehicle tomorrow and it has no an issue they're going to recall 1.5 million uh, no matter how much money they're going to lose they have to pull it out unfortunately in a roofing industry manufacturers most likely we will file a claim later on but it will not be recalled and this is just something we don't see If you're the homeowner and you buying a product, the warranty out of the box is not the warranty that advertises. It's not lifetime product. As a matter of fact, your 50 year warranty, your lifetime warranty does not mean that your shingle will last, your roof will last 50 years. Your roof will last, you know, Minneapolis is 18, 20 years. In most markets, it's less than 20 years. Like Florida has sun, Minnesota has other elements, Canada is super cold. So the thing is, out of the box, most shingles will have 10 year warranty. If you install it yourself, or if you do it with a friend, or you call someone off Craigslist, that's the warranty you're getting. So if you want that promise, if you want that lifetime, 50 year, non-prorated, 25 years, 30 years, you have to do the paperwork. You have to follow instructions. You have to use their accessories, not just shingles. So their warranty out of the box is different than the warranties, but they're calling that shingle something to get the marketing promise you have to hire a certified contractor a lot of homeowners are asking can i just buy a material myself and pay my roofer for labor my recommendation don't do it first of all most roofers buy their products not from big box stores but specialty stores like srs distribution beacon supply abc supply they stock our materials they know what they're doing they know how to deliver how to rooftop deliver and as a contractors the reason you're paying us maybe a little bit more is to deal with that material and later to deal with that warranty what are you gonna do if you provide shingles and we have a 
a problem with the shingle. You don't have a relationship with the manufacturer, but the manufacturer have a relationship with the roofer. And in case of the warranty claim, I mean, it could be one or 2% chance, but still there is a chance you will be on your own because you purchase your materials. Don't recommend it. Pay your contractor and you enjoy your roofing job. In case if something goes wrong with the product, you cannot go public and your certified installer most likely will be quiet about it as well. There's a few reasons behind it. The biggest brands in industry, they have disparaging clauses in their agreement. I have seen homeowners receiving cease and desist letters for posting pictures or videos about their jobs. So manufacturers will come and will pay to redo your roof but they will not let you talk about it. One of the reasons here is class action lawsuits. So if you go on YouTube or Google, I mean, rules ru fail all the time. I'll give you an example. Certain teeth have paid over billion dollars settlement for class action lawsuit against their organic shingles. They have problems with the newer shingles after that as well, but you're not gonna have a lot of information. You're not gonna have a lot of footage. And I actually have seen certain teeth doing it to roofers in 2020, 2021 when a roofer goes in and say, hey, I have a problem with this shingle and their reps would come in and like, well, but you have disp non-disparaging agreement, you should not be talking about it. So roofing manufacturers have been bullied roofers in a way, that's how I would call it. They would put those agreements in place. They don't want anybody to talk about it. They don't want to admit that every once in a while they make bad products. And it's, it's very old school industry where I would say that big manufacturers don't like the internet. Uh, I mean, I've been getting a lot of cease and desist letters myself, getting a lot of hate for my videos even. And the reality is we all need to wake up. We all need to make better product. We all have to think what's good for the consumer. It takes about two to three years on average in my observation talking to hundreds of contractors to settle a roofing claim imagine this you purchased a roof you spent twenty five thousand dollars and you have major discoloration or major major problem i mean don't you think that company that makes five ten billion dollar a year in sales can i just come and write a check to replace your roof, admitting their wrongs. Why does it take so long? So many roofers are frustrated about this problem. They're reaching out to me in private on a regular basis. As a matter of fact, that's number one reason for me to make in this video today, because there are so many roofers told me like, Dmitry, what do I do? I can't talk about it. Homeowner cannot talk about it. Manufacturer agrees, like one of the stupidest uh, excuses manufacturers are doing, give it a time, it's oils, so they need to settle. Really? Almost all of them say that it, oil's not gonna blend in and it's not gonna go away. Just write a check and replace the roof. As a matter of fact, preparing for this video today, I only found one YouTube video by a roofing contractor who installed certain teed roof and assisted homeowner with the claim. Within two years, they have blistering problems. You know, he shares his experience, the website he went to, homeowner got a voucher for the shingles. They paid $150 towards labor to replace the roof. One video, that's what I was able to find. And I hear stories every day. Why? Because roofers are afraid that billion dollar companies will come after them if they simply will help homeowners to settle those claims. Listen, you know, if you look at the Ford, if you look at the toy companies, I mean, they all experience big losses just because you single out one or two roofers here and there and say, shut up, I'm gonna sue you. The problem is not gonna go away. Take care of your production. When you do sell, install and ship and your product gets installed, if it's a bad batch, just come and write a check on the spot. Roofing manufacturers did not perfect recycling programs. Even those who claim they're green, and I've seen it all over the place. I've seen it here in Minneapolis. We have one landfill here in Minnesota that claims that they recycle. And my dad actually takes shingles there. And let me tell you, they don't recycle. They recycle like very small percentage. Every once in a while, you see the pile separating somewhere here. Don't replace your roof 
if you can repair it. Many roofers contribute to this problem. We replace so many roofs that are two, three, four years old. I mean, my dad used to owe a, a whole our trailers. I mean, I'm looking at all our receipts. Average roof, I'm talking about seven, 8,000 pounds of materials. That's a lot of nails. That's a lot of material. And it's one thing when it's 15, 18 years old. It's another problem when it's only two or three years old. So manufacturers will not tell you that their product is not going to be recycled on the road. So this is probably the biggest opportunity in the roofing industry. We need innovation. We need someone to come up with a product that can take old shingles, old asphalt, old granules and do something about it. Because every year our landfills become bigger and bigger and majority of the roofs that we install today, equal amount goes to our landfills and it's filling them up. And manufacturers are not talking about it. I'm not saying that they're sitting by and they're lying. They're not lying, but this is roofing insights and we say it how it is. Like Owens Corning here in Minnesota, you know, say that they partner up with a landfill that recycles. I'm not stupid, I'm not dumb, and I'm not blind. When I take my shingles there, I see that they're not being recycled, right? And I'm sharing it with the internet. Comment below what you think about it, because when I travel all over the country, I ask these questions to my roofing friends, and I'm asking them, what's happening to the shingles? We actually, we've been in landfills in Pennsylvania and in California, so we know what's going on. Comment below if you agree with my points comment below if you think that to settle a roofing claim on a bad roof it's reasonable to wait two years comment below what do you think percentage of asphalt shingles is being recycled or being just thrown away in a landfill in your experience in your company because you know your numbers you know where you're taking do you take shingles to recycling centers or regular landfills comment below what you think about this video and comment below more than anything what do you think about disparaging agreements do you think that contractors should be able to talk about problems with the product or we just lost our right and manufacturers can do anything they want to us. I remember talking to a contractor who installed a roof on a really big complex. Less than two years later, they have a major problem. Manufacturers came out, agree to pay for repairs and replacement. Contractor was not certified and their rep came out say, we want to help you. We agree to the damage, but we want you, we need you to sign certify agreement before we agree to, you know why they were doing it? Because once you sign that agreement, you go quiet. You, you will never ever will be able to talk about that claim, about the problem that contractor said, I'm not gonna become certified. I don't like your brand. I will never install your shingles and I'm not gonna put signature on that agreement. By the way, not all manufacturers have those agreements. Few of them do, big ones do. I work with the, con uh, with the manufacturers who don't practice that. So I believe that with the proper feedback, with the constructive criticism, like we're sharing today, we can make our industry better. We have seven, eight increases, price increases per year. With those price increases, I feel like we have a right to demand better quality products and we want to be heard. This is Roofing Insights. We are the voice of roofing communities. Thank you so much for visiting. Give it a like if you like this video. Comment below. I read all my comments, especially on a video like this. Thank you so much for coming.